Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. Tonight we're going to take a look at Fishing Baron Sea again. Uh, now we are looking at um, something that hasn't happened to me before. Uh, and this is the second tutorial in the series. Um, now I instructed you to not bother with the radar and to just stay within the mapped area. Um, and I'll show you my map here. You can see here there's uh, this big blue section. Now what I'm running into though is I don't have any hot spots. This is a very dull blue. Now when the fish get really hopping, this will actually be almost, it'll be yellow and yellow green, and that's where there's a lot of fish. Well, in this case, the whole area that I've scoped out doesn't have any, uh, or don't, the areas that are included at the beginning of the game don't have a big pocket of fish. So I have nowhere to fish right now. And so what that means is I'm going to have to range out of this area and start mapping other areas where, like here, where I think that fish are going to be. And usually the busiest fish places around our har our main harbor here, um, usually in this area, where, I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing with the mouse, but you should be able to, but where these boats are up along the top of this coast here, um, these are all areas that are good for fishing. Um, and of course, you know, as you get the whole map, there's lots of places, but for right now, Usually the hot spots are in this area. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and um, sorry about the frame rates. Once again, I'm having problems with this computer in this game recording smoothly. But anyway, um, I've gone into our shop, which is here, the dock, and I've gone to the upgrade shop, and I've upgraded my ship with the, or we're going to upgrade the ship with the biggest radar, which is there's only one. Uh, and what this does is it's a 250 millimeter uh, or meter range. It puts that little radar up there. <laughs> it's not too expensive though, so 4,000 bucks. You know, I mean, it's, is it worth it? Yeah, most likely. Um, so you can see here uh, on the map once again. I went out of the zone, and this is what I mapped with 100 meter reading. So 250 would have doubled this. So you really need to be the be able to double that now. Later on in the game, as you get like your second boat, uh, which is going to be what I recommend is the Selfa um, or Selfie or whatever you want to call it, uh, the crab boat that does uh, net fishing and line fishing. Um, that one has a, mu a second radar upgrade uh, that's going to get you much larger areas uncovered as you go. And the boat's a lot faster, too, so you'll uncover more of the map more quickly. To be honest with you, though, if you're going to do the whole map, I would wait till you get the Lunar Bow or the Hermes because both of those ships have an enormous radar range. And in about one or two trips, you can sail the entire map. It might take you a couple hours, but you'll get the whole map unlocked very quickly with those larger ships like the Lunar Bow and the... And, and the, uh, the Hermes, that's the... <laughs> I can't remember the name. Hang on a second. Okay, so the next thing I've done since I've last seen you, I bought uh, two 500-foot lines, and it took me several trips to do this with the low amount of fish that we're catching. Uh, I think I had to make four or five trips, but I now have two 250s and two 500s, and I've had to throw all four of them out at once. That's the most that you can carry, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, you can only hold four. The, the burger can only hold four lines. So, um... You know, I threw all of these lines out and was able to fill the boat up almost all the way with on one fishing trip. But you theoretically should be able to fill up if you put just one 500 and one 250 out there. If the fishing is good, you should be able to fill the boat up with one of these and one of these. And then when you go to take pull these in, you put these two out. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. Hopefully we're going to find some more fish. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the dock and we're going to go sailing here and see if we can't find more fish than we've been finding because this has just been I don't want to say heartbreakingly bad but it's been bad it's been really bad um, so we're kind of skunked so I'll be back uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out there and then I will catch up with you once I get out there okay so I am at the edge of the map and I'm going to zoom out here now you can't do this on the console version I believe it's only on the PC version you can zoom out here and I can see where I've been and where I haven't been. And so I'm going to start charting these waters. You see, I'll go full throttle and I'm going to go around here. And you'll see the map will start to uh, turn blue as I drive into these sections. And you'll see exactly how much 
250 meters of radar covers. Now, you won't be able to see the fish on here. You have to go into the map to see the kind of fish that are available in this area, but you can see as I slowly edge my way forward here on this slowest boat on Earth, you can see that blue area kind of following me out as a hump into the into the sea. Arg. Here we go into the sea. We're unlocking the ocean. Still not a very good range, though. The range is miserable. That's just how it is, unfortunately. Once again, once you get a better boat, you know, it'll it'll get better. But uh, for now, that's about as good as we can do. Now, uh, just so you know, before when I unlocked that little area that's ahead of us, I made like seven passes to get it unlocked. So <laughs> we are now able to do that much easier because we have the radar. Uh, but still, it's not a very large area that we're uncovering, but we're uncovering something at least, and we're able to see... And we'll be able to see some more fish here in a minute. So we're going to swing around here. My inkling is that the thicker fish are up here to the right, or the thicker fish population area is to the right. Got to catch them thick fish, you know? People like to eat thick fish. They don't like skinny fish. Thin fish are just no good. It's like thin crust pizza, you know? It's a, unless it's Donato's, it's, you know, it's, it's questionable whether it's good or not. Uh, but, yeah, so we're going to unlock this, and we're going to go into the map. <laughs> And that's it. That's probably the whole bubble right there, unfortunately. So uh, that's not a good fishing area. So we're just going to have to keep... I'm going to have to keep searching until I find that green and yellow color. Uh, in fact, if you look at the top of the throttle uh, on my... Where it says 9.7 knots, it kind of matches that color. That's the color we're looking for on the map uh, for the, the densest population of fish. And... You know, unfortunately, I just you know assumed that you'd have it right away. This is the first time... I've played the game restarted it a couple times, played it on a couple different consoles, and I've never had what happened this time happen. It's the first time I've ever had that happen where you don't have any, you know, anything at all. That's another thing you can do on the PC version. You can't do on the consoles. You can move the searchlight around. Maybe on the Xbox you can, but on the, uh, on the Switch you can't, so... But I'm loving this game, once again. Just always been a favorite of mine, and I even play it, like I said, I've been playing it mostly on my Switch because, well, to be honest with you, I play it when I poop, but... <laughs> I also play it when I'm traveling or, you know, go somewhere and I'm sitting around and i got nothing to do. Um, it's a relaxing game. I love the music. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and unlock more of the map. Let's see what we found so far. When I find a big fish pocket, I'll bring you back in. So, off I go. All right, so we're going to go to the land of make-believe. <laughs> the reason I say that is because it took me forever to unlock and find fish, and so I wanted to move on with the tutorial and get going. So, uh, my recommendation to you is to save up. A, once you have, um, and I'm going to show you this next, we're going to go over line fishing with the uh, with our Borga doing our rotation. So, I've unlocked the map. And I'm now going to take the Borga out, and we're going to put down um, two two lines and save two lines back. And then I'm going to show you how that rotational fishing works. Another little hint that I wanted to make sure I drop before I take off, and I think I forgot to tell you this last time in the first tutorial. Across the bay here in Hammerfest is a market. We're going to run over there real quick and take a look at it so you can see it. Um, but we're just going to pretend for now that everything... Uh, that we're still on that other profile. <laughs> we're going to ignore the 17 million krona that I have in my account um, and pretend that we're still starting. But I needed to, to move this along, otherwise I'll be working on getting to the point where I can actually make the tutorial all day long. Uh, but uh, I recommend that you do this method when you're fishing. Once you have unlocked um, your uh, two nets and you have some fishing areas where you actually have yellow rather than and let's take a look at the maps so you can see what they look like. I forgot to do that. Um, so you can see here, there's some really big hot spots up here. And another one here. And there's more over on these sides. I know I haven't unlocked it with the Lunar Bow yet. But uh, you can see this is how big the radar... This bloom right here is how big the radar is on the Lunar Bow. That's what I was talking about. So as you drive the Lunar Bow, it lo unlocks this whole area all at once. Um, so for us, it looks like our hot spot right now is... We can use this. This isn't great, but it's better than it was in the other profile. 
Here's a kind of hot spot there, but you can see here a really good hot spot is going to be deep, deep yellow like that. You're going to catch a lot of fish in this area. Um, so we might shoot up to there and then I'll sell the fish here. But I wanted to show you this marketplace here in Hammerfest right across the bay is a second dock. If you show up at that dock at 10 o'clock in the morning, any morning of the week, this has a marketplace here that's open. It works just like any other dock, but there's a marketplace. If you sell at 10 a.m. at the marketplace, you will receive a 20 to 30% bonus on the amount of money that you bring in for your catch. So when you're starting out, it's a good idea to kind of time yourself so that you come in here about 10 o'clock. You can get in here maybe like 4 or 5 in the morning. Don't sell the fish and park here and then fast forward the clock till 10 and then redock again and sell the fish. But uh, for each hour that goes by, you lose like, I think it's like 2%. So the next, at 11 o'clock in the morning, you get 18%. At noon, you get uh, 16% all the way until 10 o'clock at night when I think you have no percentages left. So um, and then you're back to just regular pricing. But if you want a big bonus, sell it at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I can guarantee or, or verify that uh, because I have the selfie and I was crab fishing it was, the selfie was bringing in about $250,000 per catch. When I brought it over to this pier at 10 o'clock in the morning, I made 310. So uh, it was a pretty significant difference. So you'll earn money faster if you bring it to this port right here. Once again, that's the Southern Hammerfest port. That is the market port where the, it's a direct sell to the market. So, um, so let's go out to our yellow area. And it's going to take us a little while because we've got a fast travel. But, well, oh, come on. And I'm going to take it all the way up. We're going to go to a hot spot. I really want to catch some good fish here because I want to show you this line method that I've been talking about. And you're like, what is he talking about? It's no big deal. But basically, oh, God, I hope I have lines on the boat. <laughs> I don't know if I baited it or not. I'll be back. Oh, quick reminder, if you fast travel, once again, especially with the bore gun, some of these older boats, make sure you check your fuel because it does burn more fuel, 50% uh, more fuel when you fast travel. So... Uh, make sure when you go into port that you get some gas, because I've already used a quarter tank uh, just getting here to the fishing grounds. So, I'm at the fishing grounds. I'm hoping that I have nets on board. I may not, but whatever. If I don't, I'll have to get, uh, um, we'll have to stop at another port and get some. Let's see, set gear. What do I have available? Nothing. Oh, God. Okay, I'll be back. Uh, Alright, so we're going to hop into the port here. We are at uh, Act. Carford, Ackerford, Ackerford, however you pronounce it, Ackerfield, and uh, Fajord. There we go. Boop. And we're going to go ahead and do our lines. And I should have two, and I'm going to add two 500s. There we go. We're back to where we were. So I'm going to bait these, and I just kind of randomly bait. You don't, I do one of each and one of these. There we go. So we got four lines, each with random bait. And we're going to back out. And I'm going to head back out to that fishing ground again. This time with some nets that we can put. And we're going to begin our rotational fishing. And the whole point is when you have a, a hot spot, uh, you can get a whole boat full of fish uh, with two lines and then throw two more lines out. So you're constantly having lines in the water instead of doing a bunch of lines. Coming back into port. And then going back out and doing a bunch more lines. Like, it just it makes more sense to, to try to do them, like, all the time having rotation going on. So, I am off. I will... Oops, I forgot to get fuel. Oh, well. We'll have to deal with it. Hopefully, I won't run out. Uh, that's a possibility. And then you have to call for rescue. We're not too far from port, so we should be okay. But but uh, when we get full of fish, the boat goes a lot fat, slower. So, oh, lordy, I should have got gas. <laughs> Oh, Arthur, in your tutorials, you just, man, I'm a hot mess. So I've arrived at my fishing hotspot. I am going to set one 500 and one 250, and that should be plenty to fill our boat up. I don't remember if this ship is upgraded or not, but if it is, it may not fill up all the way. However, if it's the default size will be, what's going to happen is the, uh, the ship's going to fill up uh, and still have a little bit of space left over, but... In this hot water, where there's a lot of a lot of fish action going on, um, we should be we should be filling up the boat pretty easily. So let's see here what our radar is doing. Yeah, there's lots of fish here. Look at all those fishies. 
So we threw out a 500. Now we're going to throw out a 250. I got to wait till I'm a little further away from the other line. There we go. Look at all those fish underneath us. That's great. That's how a hot spot should look. All, see how that going on in the radar there with all the fish over the right side there? That's a good fishing spot. So we have deployed both of our lines. So we're going to go ahead and fast travel back to port. And this should all happen pretty quickly now. I've still got two lines on board. And you're like, why does he do that? You'll see. So we're going to come back. And we're definitely going to get fuel when we get to port. That's the first thing we're going to do. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to check and see how long our lines have been out in the ocean. Um, because, once again, about 18 and a half hours is when we want to go out there and pull them. So I know somebody was saying that I think the average is a 17-hour set. But in this game, for whatever reason, it's 18 and a half. So... So once we get to port, we'll be able to do some things. Right now, we can look at our hook line, and we have two lines out. I know for a fact on the Nintendo, this screen comes in up at the top here. You can see I've got, it took us 10 hours to get back here. Man, this boat is so slow. 10 hours. So we're really not going to, we're not going to stay here for very long at all. Um, let's go ahead into port. And what we're going to do is we're going to definitely refuel because we are empty. And... We're going to repair the hull. Quiet! We had to get that random dog barking out of our system there. Uh, not sure why they were barking, but they just all of a sudden started barking. Nobody's here. Uh, okay, so um, boat's in dock. And once again, if we look at our hook time uh, by exiting the, the dock, we can see that our hooks have been out there for 10 hours, 29 minutes. It takes us, it means it takes us quite a while to get out there. So I would almost suggest that we don't wait at all and we just head back out. Uh, to be honest with you, it's better to wait out there and not miss the opportunity. Um, so we're just going to head out. We've got two. Remember, we have two more lines on the boat. Uh, we have a 250 and a 500. We're not going to set those yet. We're going to pull the other fish out of the water and then we'll set those. So let's head out to sea. Arg! We're going to head out to sea. The pirate Arthur the pirate is back again. Now, hopefully, you guys are watching my ship tutorials once again i recommend that you go from this boat to the sofa the crab boat and i'll show you which one that is again in this tutorial uh, and we'll go over crew management a little bit later on in this tutorial also um we were at about 17 minutes now i usually try to make them less than an hour long so uh we're gonna go ahead up to the map and we're gonna fast travel My wife is going to yell at me for making boop noises again. I say boop when I do things. Boop. All right, so we should jump right about here. See, those lines worked because you can see the gr it's gone from yellow to green, which means our we caught a lot of fish there. Hopefully we can get out there in time. We might have to do some waiting, but I'd rather do waiting on there. Yeah, see, they're changing. They're going to go green in a minute here. And we're putting along. They won't, they're green. They're going to be blue. They might even be green again. Yeah, they're blue. And we've arrived a little late. A little late. But we're okay. It's just that's how far away they are. So it takes a while to get out there. But we should be able to pull them in reasonably quickly. We may not get exactly what we wanted. But we might fall into the green on the other side of it. Once again, they go uh, red, orange, green, blue, green, orange, red and then you've lost the line um, at red they've already lost most of the fish it's time to get out the fish whacker somebody gave me the name of it and I forgot already long hauler told me what it's called and it's like a technical name and I forgot it's like a mall or something like that um, so whoop. Uh, another good question well, I wanted to pick that up there we go yes we want to haul a long line another good question one of my viewers asked uh, does your upgraded whacker apply to um, other crew members. It does not. It only affects you, unfortunately. So you can spend a million dollars on a really high-end fish whacker. And if you're going to use a crew, you're not going to get the benefits of using that high-end fish whacker. So, eh. Bad bizarre. Come on. Whack. And you'll notice instead of 13 or 12 or 10, we have 15 out of 15 on the line. That means that if we caught a lot of fish. Basically, they all have fish on them. Perfect. Just like me. 
So I'm hoping that we have at least a half. <coughs> wow. At least half of a boat full of fish when we're done with the fish whacking process. Perfect. I feel like my boat has moved forward a bit. <laughs> the line is now like way off to my port there. My, not my port, my, my aft. It's coming in the wrong way, which means we're moving lower. Pay attention, Arthur. How am I even fish whacking those? But I'm doing it perfect. We got a 60% bonus on how many fish we caught, so that's pretty cool. 62%. Good. We've caught a lot of fish. 1,100 kilograms of cod. We don't want to get the fish. So, nope. Even with our amazing quality catch, uh, we still haven't filled this boat up. Which, once again, I might have upgraded this. And I don't remember. But we have half a boat full. That's good enough. For, to get my, you, you, you catch my drift. You can use longer lines. So if you're finding that the boat is consistently not filling up, you can always do two five hundreds each time you go out, or you could even do a thousand and a two fifty, or you know whatever you, however you want to mix and match it, you can do it. You can carry four one thousand foot lines and put them up, put two out at a time, and then just cut your losses on the ones that you know get, get away because obviously you can only hold so many fish in this boat. I think this one might, I might have upgraded the storage one notch. Um, how many kilograms do we have already? No, I didn't. <laughs> I think the boat holds 3,000. I missed. Arg. You'll notice that this boat especially uh, handles really badly as it gets full. I didn't mean to hit the line. We're getting there. Full speed ahead. I'll let you cut your own net with your propeller. All right, we're gonna pull these in. Yep, hold the long line. I think it is that we, the the boat comes standard with three thousand, and I need to do the math here. I think we have four thousand, which means I did do an up. I did do a one stop upgrade. Eleven percent, good. Come on, get those perfects. We need those perfects because we really need to fill up that hull. I always wonder, too, if you get a perfect on a certain fish, does it make you have more of that exact type of fish? Or do you just it does they, do they just automatically, like, randomly... Obviously, the type of bait you use also brings in different amounts of fish. So, you know, some, some bait pulls in more redfish... Actually, the one bait that pulls in redfish really pulls in redfish. So if you need to catch redfish. The downside is the redfish don't seem to fill up the hole very much. I don't know if they're, they're skinny or lightweight or something. But, you know, man, zero here. Once again, the weather must be really bad because we're drifting like crazy. Now that the fish are coming in under the boat. It makes it harder for me to see where the, the thing is. I can't. Uh, there we go. Now they're going to be like under... Weird. It must be windy. I've actually never had that happen before. There we go. 55%. Not too bad. But much less fish because... Uh, crap. So we still have a third of the fish left over. Yeah. This definitely has an upgrade. So the, the initial boat has 3,000 kilograms. You can see there, if I had 3,000 in there, I'd still have 1,000 left. I've got 4,000 kilograms available. So I did upgrade this once. So right now the boat would be almost full, and that's how you want it. So once again, I think my my telling you putting out a 250 and a 300 or, or 250 and a uh, 500, I think that was still a correct um, assessment. You want to put out a 250 and a 500, one of each. So now we're going to go into the rotation. So what does that mean? Well, uh, we've just collected those nets. They're empty, but we have two more nets to set. So we're going to go ahead and... Set our 250. And then we're also going to set a 500. So while we go in to, we're to gut and sell these fish to the port, um, we're still going to have more lines out sitting out in the ocean. 
So when we come back out here, we'll, all we'll do is pick these lines up and drop the next set of lines. And so you just keep doing this. And that way, every, like, every, well, every 18 hours, you have more fish in. You don't have to go the full day of waiting to come back out. Like, you know, so instead of coming out, fishing, going in, with nothing, going back out to nothing and having to fish again, you're just constantly fishing. So you go out, you have fish waiting, you go out, you have fish waiting, you go out, you have fish waiting. So right now, we've got those lines in. That's it. And now it's time to head back to port. So let's go ahead and take a look at our map. Remove all waypoints, and we're going to set some waypoints for ourselves. Now, don't forget to gut your fish. And like I said, we're not going all the way back to Hammerfest because by that time we get back up to the fishing area, they're all going to be dead, you know. So it's five hours. It takes us six. Wow, it's so slow. Eight hours. So it took, yeah, it really almost took us... It took us almost ten hours to get back to port, so we're really not going to even wait in port. We're just going to... We're going to get out here. We're going to get the fish. Start gutting. I've got my pirate shiv. go I've gotten much better on the switch gutting thankfully uh, it was hard at first but I've, I've kind of learned the trick of doing it just carefully and slowly and so now I usually can get three to four stars on the switch I think the Xbox would be a little bit easier because the the controllers are larger and they're less sensitive they kind of give you a little bit more play Ooh, that wasn't good I I just uh, that was a bad gut right there and we're done. So let's go ahead and get these fish into port. Wow, it's dark. All right, so uh, we're still puttering our way over here to the dock. <laughs> oh my God. Seven and a half hours later. Uh, so you might want to upgrade the engine. Like I said, if it depends on how fast you want to get there. If you don't mind doing a little bit of upgrading, this is really slow. So this is the last phase of our rotation. And you just kind of rinse and repeat here once we're done doing this. So we're going to come into the dock any day now. We're going to come into the dock. We're coming into the dock any day in the dock. There we go, finally. Uh, and we're going to sell these fish. Um, you'll see here, this will make a nice profit. We made 64,000 krona on the fish that we just sold. That is pretty dang good. Uh, now, it doesn't really, in the scheme of things with all my money, it doesn't really make a difference, but <laughs> I'm making good money. So, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab our two lines that we have unbaited, and we're going to bait them again. And we're going to do this one, and we're going to do, let's just do that. Good. Okay, so, now, so we have, once again, we have two lines that are already out at sea, and now we have these two lines here. So, our next step is to basically rinse and repeat. We're going to go back out, collect the two lines that are out there. And we're going to go ahead and uh, throw out the two lines that I just baited, come back in, sell the fish, rebate the lines, go back out. And you're just going to repeat this process over and over again um, until you've got about 250,000 krona. Okay. Now, why do I recommend that? Because when you go to the bank, and I don't know that this town has this bank. Yeah, this town does have a bank. Uh, you will have available to you at the 5%. If you have 250,000 krona, you will have a seven hundred or $500,000 loan available at 5% with a one-year payoff. That's the best rate and uh, quick payoff that you can get. It's 20,000. I think it's 20,000 krona a month, but that's not anything to worry about because you're going to have, you're going to be making a lot of money with your next boat. So... Uh, once again, once you get 250,000 krona saved up from the Borga, come into the bank, and you're going to do that first loan. It's going to be a, a, approximately 500,000 krona. It might have even been 750, but the 500,000 krona plus the 250 that you have is going to give you 700,000 krona, and I want you to buy this. The, the selfie is, uh, oh, no, it's called Selfa on the boat. That's right. See that there on the back? It says Selfa. But this is the boat that you want to purchase. Uh, and the reason why I suggest this boat is because of three reasons. One, you can start training a crew member. Now, if you're crabbing, you don't need a crew member. 
Uh, he doesn't really do anything aside from maybe cook food and repair the boat. But it's good to start training him on repairing the boat. So uh, you may want to start with your crew member. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that right here. Uh, the second thing that you're going to want is you're going to want to be able to, to this boat because it does crabbing, net, and long line. And all three of those are going to be pretty dang profitable for you on this boat. The nice thing about the Selfa is that because you can start out with the crabbing, you don't have to upgrade the boat right away. You can leave it stock, bone stock, because none of the upgrades affect, except for radar, affect your crabbing. And because this boat has the bigger radar, you can start unlocking the map a lot faster than you would with the Borga. So let's go ahead and buy this. And once again, you'll have about 200,000s, 200,000s. You'll have about $200,000 left over once you've purchased this boat. Um, and that'll be enough for you to go back in here to the dock. And you're going to go to upgrades. And you're going to go ahead and here you're going to rate uh, get the... I think you could just buy upgrade. Let's try it. Let's see if we can. Nope, we have to do both. So you're going to spend about $15,000 on radar upgrades. But it's worth it. Uh, then you're going to also... Um, Slide down here, and I want you to buy both the net hauler and the pot hauler, okay? So now you own all of the things. So all you got to do is when you're ready to change over to the type of fishing that you're doing, you just come back into port and pick this one and say equip. Now you're ready to do net fishing. Now you're ready to do line fishing. But let's do the pot hauler because we're going to do the crabbing first, okay? Don't worry about spotlights. I don't ever use them. You can if you really want to, but you don't. And then once again... You don't really need to do any of the storage or uh, engine upgrades yet. Now, eventually you will, but this boat will make enough money that after two or three trips out, you're going to be able to pay your loan off, okay? And you'll still have like seven or eight trips left before you reach your quota of crab. And so what that's going to do for you is that you'll be able to not only pay off your loan, but you're going to be able to upgrade the ship all the way, both the engine and the storage, with just the income that you make from the boat. And then it'll be ready to go out again and do net fishing and line fishing. So... You are going to be rich from this point forward. This boat's going to make you a lot of money. Every season, you're going to make a lot of money crabbing. And I believe, I'm going to guesstimate, that you're going to bring in, when you're done crabbing, bringing in two hundred and fifty dollars to $300,000 per load, which, yes, that's how much you bring in, uh, and you switch over to net or line fishing, you're still going to bring in about like eighty dollars to $100,000 or more per load. Uh, and you don't have to gut anymore if you don't want. Now, Let's talk about crew. So we've got our boat. We're not going to upgrade it yet because we've just gone to the next boat in the game. And we're going to go crab fishing. So we need to go to town. And we're going to see who's for hire. And right now all I have is, is Donald Trump and Sander Peterson. Uh, Donald Trump is the better candidate here. And Hillary Clinton, I don't know. She's had some problems in the past, so go for Dan. Uh, <laughs> I'm just teasing for all you guys. Uh, there's several things to think about when you're buying crew. First of all, how much they cost, what their rate is. I personally find that you want to pick the more experienced crew members. So here, um, Donald Trump would be the better. Uh, Dan Trump would be the uh, better uh, option. Simply because he has more experience in air hot bait and setting. He's better at cooking. He's better at hand gutting. And he's got all these things. And you're going to keep this guy throughout the boats that you run. So as you get bigger boats and bigger ships, he's going to continue following you. And those skills that he learns on this boat are going to translate over to um, the other boats that he's on. So I would strongly recommend having Dan. Uh, we're going to go ahead. and I'm not going to hire him right now because I have crew. But you'd click on hire and Dan would go into the boat. Instead, I have people in my crew house already that are very skilled. George is probably one of my most skilled, and then also uh, Einar is good. Um, but we're going to add, and also uh, Karen, she's really good at cooking and net hauling and long haul. She's actually better than he is. So for this boat, I would say Karen's probably honestly the better the better um, option. Though George is a monster at, at hand gutting, so... I'd say he's going to come on with me here. So we're going to hire him. We're going to return him to the selfie. So now George is... Wait, who's on the selfie right now? On board. What? Tor? Tor, who told you to get on? You go back to the crew house, you moron. We want... 
We want George, right. Return the selfie. Now, you'll notice that George upgrades here. And so as we look at our crew members, let's go ahead and get out. We're just going to launch for a second. We'll come back in because we don't. the boat's not ready to go fishing yet. On this boat, we can put George as a cook, and he'll make food. We can also set George to repair, and we can set him to hand gut. Okay, so these are the the, th the places that we can set George to do things on the boat. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and have him start cooking. Now, he will, you'll notice that as he cooks, very slowly that green health bar is going to go down. After several hours of cooking, he will get so tired that he has to go back and rest. You can also force him to go to rest simply by grabbing him and dropping him into the rest hole. <laughs> Whatever it's called. The rest hole. Uh, he can also repair the ship if the boat has damage. He won't. Now, you'll notice here where under, underneath his, underneath his uh, picture there, it says idle. That means he's not doing anything, okay? If there's damage on the boat, it'll say repairing. If the boat's fixed, it'll say idle. So that's how you know the boat's been fixed. It says idle because he's done, and then you just move him back to wherever. But right now, he's cooking one meal per hour. And he's a pretty good cook, too, because George has been around with me for a long time. So I'm going to let George cook some meals. Now, the meals, you can't eat, but you can give it to him, and he'll recover twice as fast. So that's the point of having meals. I usually have three or four on hand. Let's go back into port. And we are going to go ahead and grab our crabbing stuff. So we're going to go in here. I'm going to buy. You can carry up to eight small pots. You want to buy all eight. And once again, we can rotation fish on this boat. Uh, so we are able to go out, fish, come back in, then go back out and fish. And because these pots get used over and over again, and they don't come back into port ever. They just stay out in the ocean. And you bring bait out to them. So you re you collect them, take the crabs out, rebait them, and throw them back in again. And that's how we're going to do it. You also are going to need, uh, so you fill this up all the way. You're going to get three kilograms of mackerel. And then you're also going to buy eight barrels. Pretty expensive. It gets, it gets expensive, doesn't it? Because these are how much a piece? 500? The pots are... I want to say the pots are 1,200. So let's get out there. Now, once again, I've done a full selfie tutorial. But we're going to run it again just so you guys can see you know, how to do this once again. Let's go ahead and get out to ocean. <laughs> it feels so much better. Now, you're supposed to stay under six knots here in port, but screw that. As we rocket our way out of port with our lightweight boat, uh, the cell phone once again does not need any engine upgrades when you're crab fishing because the crab really don't take up much weight on the boat. Once you start doing fishing, you'll want to upgrade the engine and you'll want to upgrade the storage capacity, but for now, you don't need to. There's a boat that's crashed over to the right. Uh, I've noticed on my switch there was a, a cruise liner that came in and crashed up on the shore right there, and he's never left. He's been there for weeks now, stuck. Hopefully they'll fix that. Now, once again, my map has already been unlocked. You will have to manually, manually unlock your map. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, we're looking for king crab right now, just king crab. Boy, the nearest hot spots are really kind of far away. So we may not come back to market to sell because I don't want to drive for 10 hours every time I come in and go out. I want to get up here, and I'll probably end up selling to Forsal, or we could go up here and sell to Akiaford. I'll probably hit this spot right here. So we're going to... But you'll notice the fast travel goes a lot faster with this boat simply because it is a much faster boat. It fast travels at 30 knots. Look at that. Wow, look at how much faster that is. Zing! We've dropped ourselves into the heart of crab country. And we're going to shut the boat. The boat's going to run at one notch of throttle, okay? You want to keep it running about two knots, two and a half knots. And I don't think you can set George to bait. Yeah, see, he just he, oh, he's done cooking. So we're going to set him to idle. And uh, so that's what George, he doesn't really do anything. When we're, now, when we're doing line fishing and netting, he'll be busy. But when we're doing crabbing, he doesn't really do anything. So, all right, we're going to get into the cabin and we're going to leave our driver's seat. And let the boat continue forward at about three knots. And I'm going to get out here and I'm going to grab a pot. And so when they talk on George about um, his ability to pot and net and bait, that's on the big crab ship. Uh, on the little one, though, they don't do it. So you have to do it yourself. 
E, E, grab the mackerel, bait the pot, and we'll have to wait a little bit. We have to wait till we're about, I think it's 25, what is it? No, 50 meters, okay. So this is a fun little mini game that you get to do with the crab. Dump that back. Nope, still not far enough. Nope. There we go. Grab another one, set that out. All right, so you guys, I think you guys are smart enough to get the idea. Uh, we bait them. We set them. We grab another one. We bait it. We set it. And it's got to be every 50 meters. 50 M. Millimeters? No, oh, meters. Pah! <laughs> faster! Faster! All I want to do is crab faster! 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 Catching only crab! Just keep remembering as you're doing this. 300,000 krona. 300,000 krona. Oh my gosh. I'm going to be so worth money when this is all over go. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish setting these pots, and uh, I'll catch up with you in the next phase. <laughs> Alright, we've finished baiting these pots and setting them, and so I'm going to go ahead and cruise on into town, but before we do that, I'm going to give you a little bit more of the tutorial. And we're almost done, honestly. Once you get past this point, the rest of what you do and what you buy is on you. We're going to jump right here to the edge of the map. I want to show you something real quick here. Just how much more radar this covers compared to the little slimy, uh, not slimy, the little slimy, the burg. We're going to fa we're going to go forward here. Ding, ding. And you can see already on the map, we're making a much bigger dent, out dent. But once again, the lunar bow is the best. So I would save your huge map unlock for the lunar bow, but you can see there, I can, I'm making a nice big boop on the map um, where I'm, I've, jump, I've jumped out of the circle. You can see this, so this is the radar zone that this covers. Uh, once again, when you first start out and you get the cell phone, I would recommend unlocking all of this area up here just north of the peninsula. You can see here where my crab pots are set. That's the perfect place to really unlock. So I would drive back and forth here quite a bit. There's almost always a lot of fishing going on just north of this peninsula here, or whatever you call this, this Ismuth, this Fjord. Uh, but where these lines are, unlock this area because this is a real hot spot here. Uh, and then further north, there's more hot spots. But uh, these areas are always really hot for fishing. So, uh, but you can see here, that's how you unlock it. And it, it unlocks probably three times as much as the Borga does. So it'll, maybe it'll go, plus you travel a lot faster since the boat's like you know, 10 to 20 knots instead of 7. Um, so we're going to fast travel into port here. And this is going to be a real quick stop, but we might have to wait, like, time-wise, like we're going to skip time. I'm going to run into port. Now, you will notice the self is a little bit unruly when it comes to handling. It's kind of... It more slides around than actually turns. So be careful not to ram yourself into the docks and stuff, because it really... It tends to swing its butt out when you steer instead of... Uh, like a, like a power boat or something, you know what I mean? It doesn't really, or a military boat, it doesn't really turn like a uh, slower rudder boat. I think it uses jets to steer, which is why it does that. So, we are here in Forsall. We are going to run into the shop here, and we're going to rebate. We're going to buy more mackerel. This is all you got to do is buy more mackerel. There you go. And uh, we're good. And so let's take a look at our, our, our lines. We're going to jump off a of port again. We're going to look at the line info. Our pots have been out there for 3 hours and 56 minutes. That means it took us about 4 hours to make our trip in. However, we did make a little bit of a detour, so I'd say 3 hours roughly. Um, so we want to wait about 11 hours and then head back out. So what we're going to do is jump back into port. And we're going to fast forward time. 10 hours. Skip. Don't skip a week. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and go fishing again. Uh, this boat's a little bit harder. It, t it tends to pull over, as you can see here, um, right into the dock. And it's really hard to get out without scraping it on the dock. There we go. Use the tire to turn us. It's making crashing, crunchy noises. So what you do is when you do that and it crunches, 
put George on the boat. Oh, there's no need for repair, apparently, so we're good. All right, well, well, how about that? Let's go ahead and get out to sea. Why am I going backwards? What the frick? <laughs> I meant to do that. Well, let's take a look at our hooks right here while we're looking. 14 hours, perfect. So we'll get out there probably about an hour and a half early, but that's okay. It's better to be early than to be late, right? Especially when you're pot picking because it takes you longer to do that, so... George, you go rest. All right, so uh, I'm going to get out here. And once again, George doesn't do much. But once again, the crew members, we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, as the crew does work, so like if I had fish that was coming in, I threw Georgie on the hand gutter. And you can see here he's already really high because he's done a lot of gutting. Uh, they will get better and better and better at gutting. And now he's gone out there to gut fish. And he's like, what? There's no fish, dude. Like, why are you putting me out here? I just sent him back inside. Uh, the other thing that changes, too, is George's health, that green bar underneath his picture, that's going to go up, too. You can see he's level 151 right now because uh, he's so good at everything. But uh, eventually they will max out. So, obviously, he's almost maxed out on hand gutting. He will max out eventually on stacking, freezing, cooking, net hauling, all of those things. So, uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of encouragement. Once, I, Like I said, once you get past this boat, I wanted to get you here in the tutorials. After this, it's kind of up to you which direction you want to go. Do you like line fishing? Do you like managing a crew? Uh, do you like, um, you know, having a boat where you have to have the, you rely, like the Vibiki Catherine or the Sharkin, uh, uh, not the Sharkin, the uh, Snarset, uh, the Moby Dick. All those ships have very large, very busy crews. Uh, the Small Bard, which is the big crabbing boat has an eight-man crew. So if you want to do crew boats, you know, that might be a direction that you head. But my goal in getting you through these tutorials was to get you to this boat because this boat is the one that unlocks the world for you. It makes a lot of money. It allows you to get bigger and bigger loans. So if you want to jump to, like, the Lunar Bow, I wouldn't recommend jumping to Lunar Bow right away. Um, but if you want to jump to, like, the Vibiki or to the, um, the Snar set, um, then this is the boat to unlock it for you. Now, once again, I would recommend that you, and I'll put a link in the description, uh, or at least in the comments section, like at the top, I'll pin a, I'll pin a link, uh, to my video playlist that has all of the reviews of all of the boats. And those are tutorials in themselves. I show you how to use each boat separately, um, so you can kind of decide what you want to do as far as running a boat. Um, but, uh, you know, you have line fishers like this one where you have to hand do it. But the boats like the Vibiki Catherine and the uh, Snarset and the Moby Dick, the crew members do all of the work for you. Basically, you just drive the boat and let the crew members do the work. So um, you can jump in if you want and help, but in general, it's better to have the, them do that. But I would recommend watching those videos if you have questions on how to manage each of those ships. In those videos, I tell you how to manage those ships. So. Uh, you don't need me to make another tutorial with the same information in it over again. Basically, you just need to watch those. So if you're interested in the Vibiki or the Snar Set or the Fallebrun, uh, which is a two-man boat uh, or two, a three-man boat. It's got two crew members and you. Uh, I show you how to run that boat, how to manage the crew and all that stuff. So definitely check out those videos. Uh, the link will be in the description once again. But uh, let's go ahead and jump over to our crab and p pick him out of the water. I love the music in this game. It's so like earth, earth music. All right, so there we go. And once again, our crew member cannot, uh, he's unable to do anything other than basically hang out right now. But when you switch the boat over to, to line and net fishing, he will be able to uh, do a lot more for you. So, all right, we're going to hang out here until the crab are ready, and we'll pull a pot out so you can see what it looks like. But once again, once you've caught all your crabs, uh, you will have about 300,000, uh, 250 at this port. At four sold, it's 250. You'll have $250,000 worth of crab, um, and you'll be able to start making some big decisions then. I'll be right back. Oh, by the way, here's a little tip. When you're waiting for your bait to set or your, your uh, lines to set like I am right now, if you double-click uh, the engine return button, I think on uh, the Nintendos it's, and on the uh, Xbox, it's the, your left joystick by clicking it. Click it once, it'll set the throttle to zero. If you click it again, it'll actually shut the motor off and save you some fuel. So you can shut the motor of the boat off when you're just waiting, and that will... 
and be environmentally friendly. So I did some rounds using fast travel because that makes time go by a little faster. Uh, where are we? I'm gonna totally disoriented right now. There we go. Uh, the crab pots are ready, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, scoop in here and start pulling them out of the water. Now, once again, George does not do anything on this part, so uh, I would recommend I, I put them on there so you can see some crew management, but. Uh, when you run the crab boat before you start doing line and net fishing, I would not get a crew member until you're ready to do the line and net fishing uh, with this boat. Because crabbing, they really don't do anything aside from make meals and fix the boat. So, but then again, you know it's kind of it's good to have him fix the boat, but he will take a percentage of your cut when you or you of your uh, catch. So I'm gonna pull that. Yep, haul in the pot. So here's the really quick mini game. And we're going to put this here, and we're going to open it up. How do we do? Is it 100%? Eh, it was like 90% full, so we're good. So then we're going to set that here. We're going to grab crabs. you got to look for females. That's a male. The male has the triangle. The female has the circle. That's a male. Triangle. I'm looking at their belly. That's a female. Throw her back. Male. 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 Female. Now you get charged a thousand dollars for each female that you or a thousand krona for each female you bring in, so make sure you throw them back. And the whole point is to keep the waters full of crab. You don't want to throw you don't want to pick up a pregnant female because then you will end up reducing the population of crab overall and that's bad for fishing and bad for the crab population and not environmentally responsible. So you want to make sure that you crab responsibly and throw the females back so that the species continues. Wow, I'm really off steering. I'm used to steering with the controller now that I've been doing it. No, 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 no. Uh. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish up pulling these pots up, and I'll show you what to do next after that, and then we'll be done. Oh, wait. I forgot one thing. The reason why I can't get the, the barrels not showing up is because of this. When you're done um, putting the pot, you have, putting them in the pot here, you have to move this over to here, and that tells you how many crab you caught. I caught 38 crab in that in that pot. There you go. Now I can catch. See how the, the red has appeared again? That, now I can pick, pick these crabs out of the water. I'll do that one more time so that you see it uh, more fluidly because that could be confusing for some. Grab the pot, set it on the thing, open it up, empty it out onto the table. That one was 100% full. You know you've had a bad catch when that's not full. It's like 80 or 70%. Seen that happen before. Grab the pot, put it over here. Grab the crabs, sort them. Male, 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 male. Lots of male crabs. Male, male, female, male. I'm recording, guys. Female, male, and one more. And so then we're going to go ahead and grab this. And pop that there. Good. 66 crabs in that pot. Much better. And so that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and collect the rest of these. I'll see you guys when I'm done. Now, once again, while I'm crabbing here, I want to put a little disclaimer in. If you are at the end of October and you're just about to get ready to buy this boat, don't. Just wait for the next year. Um, you can even wait your way through winter. The issue is that um, this boat, uh, it... Uh, you, the crabbing season ends on uh, November 1st. So uh, same thing goes for the Lunar Bow. Same thing goes for the uh, the Hermes. Uh, those ships can't... The, the mackerel season ends in November, and it doesn't start back again until, I think, February or March. I think it's March is when the season starts again. But... Uh, crab fishing ends, and, and so does uh, mackerel. Um, so 
know that the Hermes, the Lunar Bow, and this boat and the Svalbard cannot be used as crabbing vessels or uh, trawling vessels during the, that season. Uh, it is only during the uh, summer and spring and winter or fall that you can use them. You can't use them during winter. Now, the, once again, the reason why I like this boat is because it has a... Uh, yeah, so once again, the season for this uh, is short. However, this boat is nice because it's flexible. So even though the crab season is over with on November 1st, you can still line and net fish all year round. So um, you're going to use this to line and net fish during the off season. Uh, you pick up crabs during the, the on season. And to be honest with you, you're going to run out of quota pretty quick because this boat does not have a huge crab quota. You might be able to make 10 trips before you fill up the quota. This is the only boat that I might consider expanding the fishing quota on it because then you can use it for, you know, maybe 16 or 17 trips. But uh, unfortunately, you can't uh, you can't use it uh, during those months. So, But like I said, if you start fishing with this boat early on in the year, you're going to go through the quota before you reach the end of the year anyway. But if you're thinking about buying this October 30th, don't do it because you're not going to make any more money for it. And I... I'm looking at the calendar. That's what I just did. I bought this boat. Uh, in, I'm not going to save this game, but it is the, 30, the 29th of November. I've only got one day of fishing season left. Let's go ahead and take these into port. <laughs> so I wanted to make a note there just so you guys know. You know, Make sure not to buy this boat. Um, can it cross here? No. Uh, make sure not to buy this boat um, at the end of the season. Make sure you do it at the beginning of the season or mid-season because otherwise you're not going to be able to use it. Why can't I fast travel? weird i'll be back so once again if you have any questions please feel free to ask them below don't forget to check out my list uh of uh the playlist that i've put down there to check out which boats do what uh once you get past the cell phone once again i recommend there's a whole bunch of other boats that you can try out and they all do different things uh but i would just from this boat, I would go to a boat like the v the Vibiki. I think is the best all around large fishing boat, um, and I would fish with nets because you don't have to buy bait for the nets, um, you know. But uh, that's that's a, that's an option that I would go for on that one. Um, definitely do. Uh, definitely going to do. Uh, net fishing on that boat. The net fishing is always more efficient because you don't have to bait the nets. Uh, oh, the one thing I forgot to do while I was out there, I forgot to refill these up and throw them back out again, but that's okay. Uh, what I would have done before I come back into port to sell my crab, I was so excited to sell them that I forgot to uh, rebate these and throw them back into the water. You want to always have those in the water so that you don't have to go back out and do it again. Uh, that way, like we did before, you can have rotational fishing. You put the pots out, you bring them in, you bring the crab in, you Put the you know bait back in them, throw them back out again. Come back into port, and sell the crab, refill your bait, go back out, pull the pots, pull the crab out, fill them up with bait, throw them back in again, <laughs> and just continue that pattern. That way, every day you're bringing in uh, about 250,000 krona until you reach the quota. So, let's go ahead and go into the regular port here. This is not once again the uh, main port. You can see we can get up to 402,000 krona. Probably not going to get that much, but. 311, yeah. So we made just made 311,000 krona. We had to pay George eight, but that's it. Uh, so nice work, George. And we are on our way to becoming multi-millionaires, multi-cronionaires, -cron however you'd say that, uh, in this game. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful, and uh, once again, be sure to check out the list of other boats that I cover, simply because it's going to help give you an idea of which ships you want to buy, uh, for what purposes. Uh, you know, I, I honestly uh, have gotten on my big profile here with the, the multi-million, I have a further on save where I, I just kind of buy whatever I want. You know, I go out there and make more money and then buy, and I've got several boats in that profile, and sometimes I feel like taking one out, sometimes I feel like taking another one out, and... I continue to rotate boats just as I feel like playing. So uh, anyway, it is fun to, to play this game and grind, but uh, that kind of gets you to the point where you're actually making money. And once again, the Selfa Selfie is the boat that I recommend for your next boat. So when you go from the Borga, save up your money, 
go for the selfie. It's the best deal money-wise, and it's also the most flexible ship in the game. So I will see you guys next time. Have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up always help. Enjoy yourselves out on the Barren Sea, and we'll see you pretty soon here for the release of the North Sea. I know North Sea is coming out soon, so uh, I'm looking forward to that game too and seeing how the engine's improved and all that stuff. Have a great night. Bye.